how do we let users know what type of behavior that we expect so the security of our organization isn't impacted? In this video, we're going to cover the main types of policy documentation that you can expect in a secure organization. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses about distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you check out my getting started link in the description and sign up for my newsletter to get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is down in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Policies are at the foundation of how a security program operates and applies to the business. With policies, we define how security is implemented and how users should behave to keep the business secure. When we develop our policies, we utilize best practices, frameworks, such as those created by the NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, and our policies might even be influenced by regulatory requirements. Within our overall security framework that we've implemented in our organizations, there's four different documents that we can use. We can use policies, we can also use standards, we can use procedures and guidelines. Now, policies are high-level statements to define the intent of management. Policies are not optional, and they have to be followed by employees. Of the document types, policies are going to be the most general, and they're going to cover things like the cybersecurity department's mission in supporting the organization, who owns specific data types, and then delegation of authority to the chief information security officer or cybersecurity. Policies typically need to be approved by a very high level person, so like the CEO. So we don't wanna always be changing these policies and need those frequent approvals. Let's talk about some of the common policies that you might see for security. The acceptable use policy or AUP defines permissible use of networks and systems. So what you can do on the systems. Data ownership policy states the ownership of information. Who owns what data? Data classification policy describes the classification structure, which then relates to how certain data is protected. So for instance, proprietary or trade secrets are gonna protect with a lot of controls. Data retention policy defines how long certain types of data need to be retained before we destroy them. Account management policy describes the life cycle of an account from onboarding, so when somebody comes into the company, to offboarding, when they leave the company. Password policy sets the required length, complexity, reuse, and other password requirements. Continuous monitoring policy defines the company's approach to monitoring and notifies users when they're subject to monitoring. And then the code of conduct or code of ethics policy describes expected behavior from employees. Standards like policies are mandatory and they describe the way that an organization is going to carry out its information security policies. For example, you might call out specific configuration settings for an operating system or a specific technology stack to use. Standards are much more likely to change in an organization than a policy, and they can change much more frequently. Standards can also be used as minimum requirements, meaning that you could have a standard saying that you have to implement at least Windows 10, but it could be something newer. Procedures are the step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete a specific task or process. Think of these as like a tutorial. Good procedures are written so detailed that somebody new to a role could accomplish that procedure with little difficulty. Also, if you had two different people complete the same procedure, they should get the same results. Incident response cleanup procedures are a really good example of procedures because we want the cleanup to happen in the same way every time. Procedures just like policies are mandatory to follow. Guidelines are a recommendation on some concept, technology, or task. The key point with guidelines is that they're optional unlike the other types that we've covered. One thing that you'll notice the more that you read these types of documents is that language matters. Words like shall, will, must, these are all mandatory requirement words versus words like can, ought to, should, that might be optional or allow discretion. With security, not everything that we do is set in stone when it comes to controls. Ultimately, we need to adjust with the business and evaluate when exceptions are necessary. If you make an exception in your organization, you need to document information, things like the requirement that needs an exception, why can't the requirement be met, a business justification, risks associated with the exception, any supplemental controls being implemented, and for mitigation, Sometimes we call these plan of action of milestones or POAMs. Depending on the exception and the severity of the risk, the approval might need to come from a high level person within your organization. Somebody like the VP, CEO, 
or maybe even the board of directors. I'm going to tell you right now, there's people out there that are naturally just going to try to push back and get exceptions when they're unnecessary. Always try to figure out why people want an exception and if you can meet the control by making different modifications to the control or by changing the technology. As security, you shouldn't be a roadblock to the business, but you also shouldn't be afraid to push back. Question of the day, which type of documentation do you think is the hardest to create? Why do you think that? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we covered the main types of policy documentation that you can expect in a secure organization. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.